This is Mr. Hassan's Mask Channel. I'm now going to answer question number four from the October, November 2023 Mechanics M1 International A-Level at Excel paper. This question here is about vectors. It says, in this question, I and J are horizontal unit vectors directed due east and due north, respectively. So it's basically, it's as if you're looking down on a map, for example, it's horizontal, and, you know, this is north and this is east. Okay, so one unit in the east direction is I, and one unit in the northerly direction is J. That's what basically it means, as if you're looking down at a horizontal plane. So a particle me, P moves with constant acceleration, minus lambda i plus 2 lambda j meters per second squared, where lambda is a positive constant. So they're just trying to scare you with these funny-looking symbols. Instead of using a's and b's and p's and q's, they're using lambdas and mu's, which they didn't use a mu here, but they're trying to uh, just make you feel a bit intimidated by these strange-looking letters. It's just a number. It's just a letter that represents a constant. That's all. Right? Like they could have called it ai, they could have called it bi, but they've called, decided to call it lambda. Okay, so at time t equals zero, the velocity of p is 5i minus 8j meters per second. Find the velocity of p when t equals 5 seconds, giving you answer in terms of i, j, and lambda. So here, this is a question which is not about what we have in terms of, um, you know, uh, vectors in M1, where we have r equals r0 plus vt. It's not about that at all. This it's going at a constant velocity, that's his position at time equals zero, and that's his position vector after a certain time. Here we're dealing with something which is accelerating. It's going with constant acceleration. So its velocity is changing. So we can't use this formula, right? That's for constant velocity. But we have constant acceleration, okay? And with constant acceleration, we should think, think into our minds, ah, suvat. Suvat should be in our minds, okay? That's how we should be thinking when we when we see constant acceleration let's think in terms of suvat okay the suvat equations so we know that the constant acceleration is minus lambda i plus 2 lambda j now i'm going to write this as minus lambda and 2 lambda as a column vector okay minus lambda and 2 lambda i like to use column vectors when i'm dealing with vectors in my calculating it's much easier and at time t equals 0 that's like u the initial velocity time equals zero that's 5i minus 8j so u is 5i minus 8j okay and um find the velocity of p when t equals five so we want to find okay so we want to find the velocity at five seconds you know t equals five so we have v u a and t so we can use v equals u plus a t so the velocity when time equals 5 is equal to u, which is 5 negative 8, plus the time, which is 5 times acceleration, minus lambda to lambda. And we want to find it in terms of i, j, and lambda. So this is going to be 5, plus, five minus 5 lambda. Okay, 5 minus 5 lambda i, and minus 8 uh, plus 10 lambda. Okay, so if you want to write this in terms of I and J, we should write it as 5 minus 5 lambda I plus, and you're going to have, you can say 10 lambda or minus 8 plus 10 lambda J. I could have written that as 10 lambda minus 8 J as well. Fine. Okay, so there's the answer to part A of this question. The velocity of the particle when T equals 5 seconds. Okay, so if this is to do with, a lot of people start writing R equals, straight away R equals R0 plus VT, and then they get stuck. What do I do here? What's V? Oh, V is this, but then V is something else. That's when you have something moving with a constant velocity. That's where it was in the beginning. We know the initial position vector, and that's the time we want to find where its position is. This is nothing to do with this question here. This is to do with something that's accelerating. It's not going at a constant velocity. We don't know the position vector of it at any point. We know what the velocity was at a certain time. We want to find what the velocity is at another time. We can use the SUVAT equations. You can apply the SUVAT equations to these vectors, Absolutely fine. So be very careful about not to just be a parrot and say, oh, vectors, R equals R0 plus VT, and then you don't know what to do. Use your, you have to use your brains and be a bit more, um, you know, think a bit more clearly, basically. All right, so for part B, it says the speed of P when T equals 5, they told us it's 13 meters per second. Show that this is true. Okay, how do we do that now? We know 
uh, we found the velocity at five seconds was five minus five lambda and minus eight plus 10 lambda. Okay, I've written it as a column vector. Now, the speed, when it comes to vectors, the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So basically, what they said that is the magnitude of the velocity is equal to 13. The speed is equal to 13. So the magnitude of this vector is equal to 13. How do you find the magnitude of a vector? Well, you take the i component and you square it. And you take the j component and you square it. So I'll write this as 10 lambda minus 8. Okay, and that's going to be the square of the, okay, the, the speed. I could put the square root of all of this is 13, or I could just square, put, don't put the square root and write that's 13 squared. Okay, so that is how you can uh, sort this question out. And hopefully, when we finish simplifying this, we're going to get this exactly, all right, if we've done it right. So you have 5 squared, which is 25. Have 5 times minus 5, which is minus 25, doubled, which is minus 50, so minus 50 lambda. And you have minus 5 squared, minus 5 lambda squared, which is plus 25 lambda squared. Then you have 10 lambda squared, which is 100 lambda squared. Okay, and then you're going to have to multiply these as negative 80 lambda doubled, which is minus 160 lambda. And then you're going to square the last term, which is plus 64, equals 169. Okay, so we have 25 lambda squared plus 100 lambda squared, that's 125 lambda squared. We have minus 50 lambda minus 160 lambda, that's going to be minus 210 lambda. Okay, then we got 25 plus 64, that's going to be 89. So you have 89 minus 169, that's going to give me um, 80. That's going to be negative 80, is it? Yeah, negative 80 equals 0, because you have to subtract 189 from both sides. What I'm going to do to make sure that uh, we get the marks, because we have been told what it has to become, I'm going to show the steps a bit clear, more clearly for this. So I'll say 25 plus 64, that's going to be, that's going to be 89 minus 169 equals 0. So I have 125 lambda squared minus 210 lambda 89 minus 169 is going to be minus 80 equals zero and now we can see there's common factor in all of these terms and i think that common factor has to be three because we end up with 25 lambda squared um it has to be five sorry five five goes into 125 25 times isn't it five into 12 goes two remainder two so 25 lambda squared, so you're dividing by 5 every term. 210 divided by 5, 5 goes into 21, 4 times remainder 1, so that's 42 lambda, okay, that's right. And then 80 divided by 5 is 16, so that's exactly correct. And we have shown that this equation is the result of finding the speed or the magnitude of our velocity vector. And there's part B um, done of this question. All right, so, yeah, so we know then, once we got that right, we know that we've done part A right, because what we, what we found, the magnitude of that was what had to be found if, you know, we were correct. So we know for sure if you've done that right, then we know that you can rest assured that A is also right. That's A and B done. Now for part C. It says, find the direction of the motion of P when t equals 4 seconds, giving your answer as a bearing to the nearest degree. So let's have a look when um, t equals 4 seconds. So we have to find the velocity at 4 seconds. All right. So we're going to do a very similar thing. Okay. We know this information here. So I'll take this information, except the difference now is we have to find the velocity at 4 seconds. Okay. So we have SUVAT again. Okay, so we have t equals 4 seconds. We have the initial velocity is 5 minus 8. We have the final velocity is, uh, we have to find that. Okay, 
and the acceleration we know is minus lambda and two lambda. Okay, so acceleration is so the acceleration is minus lambda and two lambda. Okay, now we know now we can try to solve this equation to find what lambda is. That's that's the difference now. We know what lambda is, or we can find what lambda is. We have twenty five lambda squared minus forty two lambda minus sixteen. So we have twenty five. 25 lambda squared minus 42 lambda minus 16. Minus 42 lambda minus 16 equals 0. That's the equation that we formed, okay, which we can help us now find um, the value of lambda, okay, because, um, yeah, that will help us find what lambda is, okay. Lambda is a constant, that's why. So that will help us find the acceleration. And then once you find the acceleration, we can then find the, the value of V. And once you find what V is, we can then find its direction as a bearing. So let's have a look here. We want to solve this equation. Now to solve this equation, I think the best thing to do here would be to be honest, use the quadratic formula because the numbers are quite big. It's probably, easy, it's probably um, possible to factorize but that would be a bit of a hassle. So we can say lambda equals minus b, so it's minus minus 42, which is 42, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be minus 42 all squared, which will be the same as positive 42 squared, minus b squared minus 4 times a, which is 25 times minus 16 for ac, over 2 times a, which is 2 times 25. So that should give us the value or values of lambda. Okay, so let's have a look. We're going to have uh, 42 plus the square root of 42 squared minus 4 times 25 times negative 16 over 2 times 25. Okay, that gives us 2. It's a nice easy number, so it was probably easy to factorize this. but It was like, too much hassle to think about it, to be honest. And then we're going to go back and put a minus sign here. Okay, that'll give us the other answer, which is minus 8 over 25, which is going to be, so lambda is equal to minus negative 0 0.32. Okay, now, um, let's have a look. What does it say here in the question? It says where lambda is a positive constant okay so you've got to be careful lambda is a positive constant so therefore we can say lambda equals two because lambda is positive okay okay so lambda has to be greater than zero okay so we have to reject this answer which is quite good because what was it minus 0 0.32 it's not a nice number two is a much nicer number to deal with so now we can say the acceleration is going to be minus 2 and 4. Okay, so now we know the acceleration. We can find the velocity after 4 seconds. So we know that uh, we can use v equals u plus at. v equals u plus at. So the velocity after 4 seconds is initial speed, which was 5 minus 8. The initial velocity, sorry, 5 minus 8 plus acceleration, which we know is minus 2 times 2, 4 minus 2, 4 times the time, which is 4 seconds this time. So the velocity after four, 4 seconds is going to be 5 minus 8, which is minus 3, and minus 8 plus 16, which is 8. Minus 8 plus 16, which is 8. So that's the velocity after 4 seconds. So now we got to find the direction of motion of P, giving the answer as a bearing to the nearest degree. So let's say... It's moving in this direction, minus 3, 8. So it's, it's, it's going to be here at a certain point. We're going to find the bearing that it's moving in. So I'm going to draw a north line for, from where it starts. Okay, the north line is from where it starts, which is going to be over here. It's going to go 3 units to the left and 8 units up. It's going to go something like this. 3 units to the left and 8 units upwards. Okay, just a, a rough sketch here. So it's going to go 3 to the left and 8 up. So you'll end up with something that looks similar to this. Okay, this is its motion. This is V. This is negative 3 and 8. It's not drawn to scale. Um, but we want to find its bearing 
okay, its bearing. Now its bearing is always measured from the north line in the clockwise direction. So it's this over there, this angle. So what we could say that it's the same as 360 minus the angle theta. It's 360 minus theta. Now this is also theta. Why? Because these are alternate these are alternate angles. So like north line, this is straight up. This is a right angle triangle. So we can say that the tangent of theta opposite over adjacent is minus 3 over 8. Now we don't care about the minus sign. I care about the magnitude. I don't care about the, the minus sign. Because I'm just looking at 4. I'm just looking for what is this angle over here. Okay. So I'm going to say theta equals inverse tan of 3 over 8. So we have inverse tan of 3 over 8, which gives us 20.556 degrees, 20.556 degrees. All right, so the angle we're looking for, the bearing is going to be 360 minus 20.558. So we take our answer and we do 360, take away our answer, and that gives us 339.44, 339.44 degrees. Let's see what they ask us to write it to the nearest degree. So we'll write, therefore, 339 degrees. That is the bearing, okay, that this uh, object is moving up with a velocity of negative uh, 3.8, negative 3.8, okay? So there's the answer to the question number four from this paper, October 2023, M1 at Excel. Other questions, I think that was the last part of the question, by the way. Yes, it was. So other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist, the link for which will appear at the end of the video in this area over here. Other questions from vectors of M1 can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. And you can watch a video which will be linked over here that tells you how to use my channel to find the things you might be uh, looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.